you've got a cue into your console that you have got pre-recorded there, we could then edit it and update it. So let's say for this, I need a bit of front light on my lead singer. I'm going to go to my light I need, and I can then move that fixture to illuminate my performers. That's rather intense, that's quite bright. Let's bring that down a touch. When you've made the changes you need, you can then press the update button. I'm now going to tap my master playbacks go button, which is now flashing at me, and that's going to update the queue that I'm currently in. And there we go. That's now updated my queue for me. This time, let's say I'm in queue one, and I realise before I go into my queue two, I just need that middle pair of fixtures on their own. So I need to insert a queue. So first things first, I'm going to create the lighting state that I need. Using my channel faders, I'm going to go and actually latch out the lights that I don't want. To do that, move the fader of the light to the level that that light is currently out, and your fader then gains control. So I'm going to go and do that process to get rid of these lights. I'm now left with just the lighting state that I want on stage, and I want this lighting state to go between Q number one and Q number two. To do that, press record, but before pressing your master playbacks button, first press the Z slash shift button, and I can then type in 1.5 to allow me to record this in as Q1.5. I can then tap my master playbacks button as normal, and I can see that if I close my Z window now, that's been recorded as Q1.5. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to tap my clear button to get rid of my manual changes, and that allows me to see Q1 on stage. I can press my go button to go into 1.5 that I've just recorded. There's my lighting state, and I can then press my go button to go into Q2. Every queue has the ability to have a name. Don't forget to name all of your queues so that you know exactly what each state does. Double tap and you can give it a name using a USB keyboard or the on-screen keyboard. Let's say that queue number three, I want to automatically run after queue number two. To do that, I have settings available for every queue that I program. Tap the settings button to go into the settings of queue three, and I'm going to go and say that the trigger is automatically after the previous queue. I'm also going to put a wait time in there as well, and click OK. And this time, there's my Q1.5. I'm going to go into Q2. Q2's fade times are going to run, and once they've completed, my wait time counts down, and I then will go into Q3. Lastly, we can also, of course, delete queues. Let's say that I don't need Q number two anymore. If I want to get rid of Q number two, I can type delete, tap my Z button, and again, type the Q number using my number pad that I want to get rid of. And so if I say delete two and tap my master playback go button, that will say, are you sure you want to delete Q zero slash two? Zero being my master playback here. Q number two, and I can say yes. And there we go, Q2 has now been deleted for me.